Hey, friends of theCUBE, it's Lisa Martin live at Stanford University covering the eighth annual Women in Data Science. But you've been a CUBE fan for a long time, so you know that we've been here since the beginning of WIDS, which is 2015. We always love to come and cover this event. We learn great things about data science, about women leaders, underrepresented minorities. And this year we have a, a special component. We've got two grad students from Stanford's master's program in data journalism joining. One of my, them is here with me, Hannah Freitag, my co-host, great to have you. And we're pleased to welcome to from Intuit for the first time, Sheer Mayer Lador, Group Manager at Data Science. Sheer, it's great to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And I was just secret squirrel talking with my boss of the Cube, who informed me that you're in great company. Intuit's chief technology officer, Mariana Tessel, is an alumni of the Cube. She was on at our SuperCloud event in January. So, welcome back, Intuit. Thank you very much. We're happy to be with you. Tell us a little bit about um, about what you're doing. You're a, you're a data science group manager, as I mentioned, but also you've had you've done some cool things. I want to share with the audience. You're the co-founder of the Pi Data Tel Aviv meetups the co-host of the Unsupervised Podcast about data science in Israel. You give talks you, you, um, about machine learning, about data science. Tell us a little bit about your background. Were you always interested in STEM studies from the time you were small? So I was always interested in mathematics. Um, I, when, I, when I was small, I went to this pressure program for youth going to university. So I did my tests in mathematics uh, earlier and studied uh, in university some uh, uh, courses. Um, and that's why I understood I want to do something in that field. Um, and then when I got to go to university, I g went to uh, electrical engineering when I found out about algorithms and how interested it is to be able to uh, find solutions to problems, to difficult problems with math. Um, and this is how I find my way into, found my way into machine learning. Very yeah. cool, there's so much, we love talking about machine learning and AI on the cube. There's so much potential. Of course, we have to have data. One of the things that I love about WIDS and Hannah and I and our co-host Tracy have been talking about this all day, is the impact of data in everyone's life. If you break it down, I was at um, Mobile World Congress last week, all about connectivity telecom. And of course, we have this expectation that we're going to be connected 24-7 from wherever we are in the world, and we can do whatever we want. I can do an Uber transaction, I can watch Netflix, I can do a bank transaction. It all is powered by data. And data science is the, some of the great applications of it. It's what it's being applied to. Things like um, uh, climate change, or police violence, or health inequities. Talk about some of the data science projects that you're working on at Intuit. I'm an Intuit user myself, but talk to me about some of those things. Give the audience really a feel for what you're doing. So if you are an uh, Intuit product user, you probably use TurboTax I in do. the past. So <laughs> uh, for those who are not familiar, TurboTax help customers submit their taxes. Uh, basically, my group uh, is in charge of getting all the information automatically from your documents, the documents that you upload to TurboTax. We extract that information to accelerate your tax submission to uh, make it less work for your cu for our customers. Um, so Thank this you. Is, yeah, this <laughs> is uh, and this is why I'm so proud to be working at this team because our focus is really to help our customers to simplify uh, uh, all the you know financial heavy lifting with taxes and also with small businesses. We also do a lot of work in extracting information from. Uh, uh, small business documents like bills, receipts, different uh, bank statements. Yep. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so this is really exciting for me, the opportunity to work to apply data science and machine learning uh, to solutions that actually help uh, people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the past years there have been more and more digital prod products emerging that need some sort of data security. And how did your team or has your team developed in the past years with more and more products or companies um, offering digital services? Yeah, so uh, can you clarify the question again? Sorry. Yeah, have you seen that you um, have more customers? Like, ha has your team expanded in the past years with more digital companies starting that need 
kind of um, data security? Well, definitely. I think, you know, the, the since I joined into it, I joined like five and a half years ago, back mm -hmm. when I was in Tel Aviv. Um, I recently moved uh, to the Bay Area. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I joined, there were like a, a dozens of, of uh, data scientists and machine learning engineers on Intuit, and now there are a few hundreds. So we definitely uh, uh, grown with the year, and there are so many new places we can apply machine learning to help our mm -hmm. customers. Um, so th this is uh, amazing that the mm -hmm. so much we can do with machine learning to get more mon money in the pocket of our customers and uh, make them do less work. I like yeah. both of those. More money in my pocket and less work. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Exactly. Keep exactly. going into <laughs> it. But one of the things that is so cool is just the, the abstraction of the complexity that Intuit's doing. I upload documents or it scans my receipts. I was just in Barcelona last week, all these receipts and conversion of euros to dollars. And it takes that complexity away from the end user who doesn't know all that's going on in the background, but you're making people's lives simpler. Unfortunately, we all have to pay taxes, <laughs> most of us <laughs> should. And of course, we're in tax season right now. And so it's, it's really cool what you're doing with, with ML and data science to make pr fundamental processes to people's lives easier and just a little bit less complicated. Definitely, and I think that's what's also really amazing about Intuit. It how it combines human in the loop as well as AI, because in some of the tax situation, it's very complicated maybe to do it yourself, and then there's oh yeah. an option to work with an expert online that goes on a video with you and helps you do your taxes. And the expert's work is also accelerated by AI, because we build tools for those experts to do their work more efficiently. And that's what it's all about is uh, you know, using data to be more efficient, to be faster, to be smarter, but also to make complicated processes in our daily lives and our business lives just a little bit easier. One of the things I've been geeking out about recently is ChatGPT. I was using it yesterday. I was telling everyone, I was asking it, what's hot in data science? And I didn't know, <laughs> would it know what hot is? And it did, it gave me trends. But one of the things that I was so, and Hannah knows I've been telling this all day, I was so excited to learn over the weekend that the, the CTO of OpenAI uh, is a female. I didn't know that. <laughs> and I thought, why are we not putting her on a pedestal? Because people are likening ChatGPT to like the launch of the iPhone. I mean, revolutionary. And here we have what I, I think is exciting for all of us females, whether you're in tech or not, is another role model because really ultimately what WIDS is great at doing is showcasing women in technical roles. Mm -hmm. Because I always say, you can't be what you can't see. We need to be able to see more role models, female ro role models, underrepresented minorities, of course men, because a lot of my sponsors and mentors are men, but um, we need more women that we can look up to and see, ah, she's doing this, why can't I? Talk to me about how you stay the course in data science, what excites you about the potential, the opportunities, based on what you've already accomplished? What inspires you to continue and be one of those females that we say, oh my God, I could be like Sheer. <laughs> I think that uh, what uh, inspires me the most is the endless uh, opportunities that we have. I think we haven't even started tapping into everything that we can do with generative AI, for example. <sighs> There's so much that can be done to further help you know, people make more money and um, do less work because there's still so much work that we do that we don't need to. Um, you know, this is with it into it, but also um, uh, um, there are so many other use cases, like I heard today, you know, with the, um, the, the talk about the, the police. Um, so th that, was, that was really exciting, how you can apply um, uh, machine learning and data to actually help people, to help uh, uh, people that have uh, uh, been through wrongful things. Um, so um, I, was, I was really moved by, yeah. by that. And I'm also really excited about all the medical applications yeah. that uh, we can have with data. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's true that data science is so diverse um, in terms of what fields it can cover. Um, but it's um, equally important to have diverse teams and have like e equity and inclusion in your teams. Where is Intuit at um, promoting women, non-binary minorities in in your teams to progress data science? Yeah, so I, I have so much to say on this. Good. <laughs> but in my in my work in Tel Aviv, I had the opportunity to start with Intuit uh, Women in Data Science mm -hmm. branch in Tel Aviv. 
So that's why I'm super excited to be here today uh, for that, because basically this, this is the original conference, but as you know, there are branches all over the world, and I got the opportunity to lead the Tel Aviv branch uh, uh, with Israel since 2018, and we've been through already this year it's going to be it's next week it's going to be the sixth conference and every year our uh, number of submission to make talk in the conference doubled itself we nice. started with 20 submission then 50 then 100 this year we have over 200 submissions of females to give talk at uh, the conference that's fantastic and beyond the fact that there's so much traction i also feel uh, the great impact it has on the community in Israel, because um, one of the reasons we started with was that when I was going to conferences, I was seeing so uh, little women on stage in all the technical conferences, you know, kind of the reason why I guess, you know, Margaret and team started the WEEDS conference. So I saw the same team thing in Israel and I was always frustrated. I was organizing PIDA pay data meetups, as you mentioned, and I was always having such a hard time to get female speakers to talk. I was trying to role model, but uh, that's not enough, you know? We need more. So uh, once we started WEEDS and people saw, you know, so many examples on the stage and also, you know, uh, uh, w females got opportunity to talk in a place that you know for that then it's also started spreading and you can see more and more female speakers across other conferences mm -hmm. which are not uh, women in data science so I think just the fact that Intuit started this conference uh, back in Israel and also in Bangalore and also the support uh, Intuit uh, does uh, uh, for uh, WIDS in Stanford here, it shows how much uh, WIDS uh, values are aligned uh, with our values. Um, yeah, and I think that to show for that, I think we have over 35% females in, in the data science and machine learning engineering roles, which is Pretty amazing, I think, Way comparing above to average. the industry. Yeah. Absolutely, I was just, um, yeah. we've been talking about some of the anitab.org stats from 2022 showing that, because usually if we look at the industry to your point, over the last, I don't know, probably five, 10 years, we're seeing the number of female technologists around like a quarter, 25% or so. 2022 data from anitab.org showed that that number is now 27.6%, so it's gr it's very slowly. It's very slowly going increasing. Going in yeah. the right direction. Too slow. <laughs> and that representation of women technologists increase at every level, except intern, which I thought was really interesting. And I wonder, wow. is there a COVID relation there? I don't know. What do we need to do to, to start opening up the, the top of the, of the pipeline, the funnel, to go downstream to find kids like you when you were younger and always interested in engineering and things like that. But the, the good news is that um, the hiring, we've seen improvements, but it sounds like Intuit is way ahead of the curve there with 35% women in data science or technical roles. And it's always nice and refreshing that we've talked to Hannah about this too, is seeing companies actually put action into initiatives. It's one thing for a company to say, we're going to have 50% you know, 50, 50 females in our organization by 2030. It's yeah. a whole other ball game to actually create a strategy execute on it and share progress. So kudos to Intuit for what it's doing because that is more companies need to adopt that same sort of philosophy. And that's really cultural yeah. at an organization. And culture can be hard to change, but it sounds like you guys kind of have it dialed in. I, I think I think we definitely do. That's why I really like working in Intuit. Um, and I think that a lot of it is uh, with the role modeling, um, diversity and inclusion, and by having women leaders. When you see a woman in leadership position mm -hmm. as a woman, it makes you want to come work at this place. Um, and as an evidence, when I build the, the team I started in Israel at Intuit, I have over 50% women in my team. Nice. Yeah, because uh, when you have a woman in the interviewer's panel, it's, it's much easier. Um, it's more inclusive. That's why we always try to have at least you know, one woman and also other minorities represented in our interviewer's panel. Um, yeah, and I think that in general, it's very important um, as a leader uh, to kind of know your own biases and trying to have a defined standard and rubrics in how you evaluate people to avoid for those biases. So all of that inclusiveness and uh, um, in leadership really helps to get uh, more uh, diversity in your teams. It's critical. That yeah. thought diversity is so critical, especially if we talk about AI, and we're almost out of time, but I just wanted to bring up, you brought up a great point about the diversity and equity. 
with respect to data science and AI, we know, we know in AI there's biases in data. We need to have more inclusivity, more representation to help start shifting that so the biases start to be dialed down. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think a conference like WIDS, and it sounds like someone like you and what you've already done so far in the work that you're doing, having so many females raise their hands to want to do talks at events is a good situation, it's a good scenario, and hopefully it will continue to move the needle on the percentage of females in technical roles. So we thank you, Sheer, for your time sharing with us your story, what you're doing, how Intuit and WIDS are working together. It sounds like there's great alignment there, and I think we're at the tip of the iceberg with what we can do with data science and, and inclusion and equity. So we appreciate all of your insights and your time. Thank you very much. All I right. enjoyed very, very much. Good. We, yeah. We, yeah. we hope we aim to please. <laughs> 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 for our guests and for Hannah Freitag, this is Lisa Martin coming to you live from Stanford University. This is our coverage of the eighth annual Women in Data Science Conference. Stick around. Next guest will be here in just a minute.